death is the most frightening aspect of human existence, hands down. The idea of extinction, because it's the great contradic contradiction, the great philosopher Ernest Becker spoke about this, the utter infinite preciousness of the human soul and the utter ordinariness and fragility of the human body is such a bitter contradiction. So then when we lose someone we love, we always say, how is it possible that a soul so wonderful was carried in the world in a vessel so vulnerable and so breakable. Death is so powerfully difficult for us to accept and, 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 and we live in a culture which has, has offered us the image, the promise, of perhaps you can live a little bit longer, almost forever, you know. So the first thing is it's the fright most frightening thing there is and the second thing is our culture has a particular hard time with it because we're living so much longer now and there's always this process, there's always this promise that somewhere there's a doctor who has the thing that'll cure you. You know, you, great metropolitan hospital has all of this machinery but maybe there's a guy in a small third world country who has the vitamin that will cure you. We, we don't want to let it go, we don't want to let life go. And, and of course the other possibility, the other problem is that we, we hide it. My grandmother, my, mother, my mother's mother, died in, in her bedroom, in the house. I was there, I was, like, well, I was a little kid. That's the way people used to die, they died at home. We saw them die. Now people are taken away to these vast mysterious institutions called hospitals and stuck in these very forbidding cells called uh, ICU units and they die in, in privacy and so death has become hidden from us and we're scared of it and we're, we resist even looking at it resist talking about it. It's the most frightening thing there is. The only solution to it, I find, is first of all to embrace life and to understand that if you live a full life, death is nothing to be afraid of. And second of all, in my own experience, both as a, as a patient, as a person, and as a clergyman, the only thing more powerful than the fear of death is the gratitude for the blessings of life. So when a family comes and says, I can't have the conversation, my first answer, my first answer is, Tell me all the things you're grateful for in this life. Tell me the moments that you cherish. Tell me the, the gestures that you hold dear. Tell me the wisdom that you share. And by reciting all of that, they come to a place of gratitude for the life, and now they're ready to say it's time to let it go. And gratitude is the only thing in human repertoire of emotion more powerful than fear. The statistic, I believe, if, if I read properly, is that Asked in a survey, 80% of Americans say they want to die at home in their own bed, surrounded by the people that they love. Only 25% end up dying that way. Most people die in the ICU unit or the emergency room on stiff hospital sheets, under cold fluorescent lights, surrounded by sometimes their family, but often by, by strangers, medical professionals certainly, but strangers. That's not what anybody wants. And the reason we do that is because we haven't prepared, because we haven't taken death seriously as really a part of life. We think of it as an emergency. We're surprised when it arrives. And so we're not prepared for this thing. I, again, I'm a clergyman. You'd be surprised how many people whose loved ones are in their 90s have never thought about the prospect of death. When I ask a very innocent question, does the person own a cemetery plot? Have you thought about what sort of funeral service you might want to do? Um, who should we be calling now to come to the bedside? They have never thought about this stuff. In America, it, it, you know, the genius of American denial that we can push all of this off, even for a person in their 90s. You know, somehow if we talk about it, it's going to bring it on. So slowly, one of the, what's happening in the clergy community is now this is becoming a topic we're talking about a lot. There are websites now, Dinner with Death, Designing Death, a lot of other clergy people took my talk and talks like it and are giving them in churches and synagogues and mosques. Um, I'm very grateful that people are beginning to see this. In, in, in the Jewish tradition, there's this idea that, that death is actually a gift because death reminds us that the days we have are important. It reminds us not to waste life. And, and death is a gift to life. It, 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 it may close a door, but it opens a window and bring some light into the poignance, the, the importance of today, the, the importance of relationship, the importance of forgiveness, the importance of, of making peace in the world with one another. So I, I, I think this is a wonderful, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that medical science continues to push death off, certainly glad, especially for me and for people like me. But 
I, I understand something's happening in our culture. We're, this is becoming something we're not so much afraid to talk about, and we're learning from it. 